Hello everyone, back to you into our latest update for the United States. So we're going to have a look at the uh, latest model output for America for the next couple of weeks. And then we haven't got 7 Speed 2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. I haven't got CFS uh, for the next four weeks at the end of the video. That will take us pretty much to the end of July, uh, I think. So uh, we'll see what the CFS is predicting for the United States. Uh, for July, um, later on in the video, and right at the very, very end of the video, actually, we're going to have a look at CFS V2 for December. It shows something quite interesting uh, for December. I want to bring this to the attention of everybody in America, as I did yesterday in my live stream, uh, for everybody in the UK and for Europe too. But that will be in the closing minutes of the video. Uh, now, these uh, forecasts for America are uh, YouTube exclusives, so uh, if you are enjoying the uh, the content for America, then please can give us a thumbs up on the video, give us a like, let us know in the comments what you think, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 7K subs. We are closing in on our target very quickly now. Um, so, uh, so yeah, please, uh, please subscribe to the channel, and, uh, we release our U.S. forecast every Monday and Thursday, our videos in the United States every Monday and Thursday, uh, and, uh, and if you subscribe and click all notifications, then you will be notified by YouTube when we are releasing this content and live streaming and uh, releasing all of our other videos as well. That's absolutely great. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for you, Matt, don't get to your friends to subscribe as well. If everybody who subscribes brings a friend, then uh, we will very, very quickly reach our 7K sub-target. Uh, right, then, let's get on with it. We're going to start off in the tropical Atlantic. So, of course, we are moving into the tropical storm season. The uh, tropical storm season for the Atlantic uh, it begins on the first day of June, ends on the first day of November, although you can get tropical storms, even hurricanes, outside of, of, of those um, defined periods. Uh, but anyway, we have got a disturbance area here in the far southern tropical Atlantic, right way down in the far southern tropical Atlantic. Let's have a look at that. It's disturbance one with a 10% chance of cyclone formation over the next uh, 48 hours or in the next 48 hours. Uh, so, shall we see what the National Hurricane Centre are saying about that? Disturbance 1, 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. They're saying disorganised uh, showers and thunderstorms located several hundred miles east of the southern Windward Islands are associated with a tropical wave. Some slight development of this system is possible during the next day or so when it moves westward to northwest was around 20 miles per hour. Strong upper-level winds are forecast to inhibit further development by mid week. It has a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours and a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next 5 days. It doesn't look like that's going to do a great deal but we did have a situation last week where we had a disturbance area with just a 20% chance of cyclone formation at one point and it did in fact in the end very quickly uh, get upgraded to uh, Tropical Storm Dolly uh, very short lived Tropical Storm but it did happen uh, last week so we can't totally rule out that this won't get upgraded however at the moment it doesn't look as though that disturbance area is going to do a great deal Otherwise, there's not much happening. Uh, this is from EarthNollSchool.net. This is showing uh, the upper level winds coming uh, across the tropical Atlantic. So let's just uh, highlight this so everybody knows uh, where we are. That's uh, the Atlantic coast of Africa just there. This is the eastern seaboard of the United States just here. That's Florida. Uh, this is all like the Caribbean. Uh, let's get rid of that. So Gulf of Mexico is through here. Uh, and, of course, we've got the west coast of the United States going up there. Uh, right, so you can see from the way the arrows are coming across the tropical Atlantic that we have got pretty strong upper-level winds. It's also showing um, uh, particles as well uh, within the upper atmosphere. So you can see that we are still dragging out quite a, uh, quite a bit of uh, dust and sand from Sahara and Africa and pulling it with these upper-level winds uh, across the tropical Atlantic. This will continue to have an inhibiting effect on tropical storms and hurricanes for the time being. Just here, you can see that the uh, the upper level winds are a little bit weaker through there, and there is less in the way of sand and, uh, and dust. So if anything was to develop, I think it would probably develop in this sort of area at the moment. Over here, we have got quite a strong 
uh, upper level wind, and we've also got quite a bit of dust and sound coming uh, out of Africa. Quite, quite, a, quite a lot of uh, particles. So, so I wouldn't anticipate there'll be all that much developing in this sort of area for the time being. I would think it's, if anything, going to develop. It's going to be most likely in this area. But again, I don't think there's going to be much happening over the next few days. I think it's going to remain pretty quiet, uh, really, through through the tropics uh, of the Atlantic Ocean for the time being. Uh, this is the Northern Hemisphere view of the latest GFS. I'm going to have a look at the GFS for, for the United States in a moment. But I want to show you this view of the North Pole and Arctic down, looking down into the tropics. So, uh, again, let's just uh, highlight where, where everyone is. Uh, this is from metroseal.fr, by the way. All the links to websites are uh, with description, uh, with, are in the description with the video. And that's the east coast of America. Again, we can't really see the east coast of, uh, of Africa, but it's, it'll be like here, going down there. You can imagine the uh, east coast of, America will, of Africa will be down there. Uh, so this is like the Azores High, just here. Now, what we're looking for is disturbance areas to run across this 1015 millibar isobar uh, just here. It does get a little bit cut off by the image, but that 1015 millibar isobar is, uh, tends to be along that ice bar that, that we get um, disturbance areas like thunderstorms and so on. Remember, all of these tropical storms and hurricanes begin their genesis as thunderstorms. And then the thunderstorms move across the hot waters of the tropical Atlantic. They pick up energy. They pick up rotation. Uh, they will form areas of low pressure. From areas of low pressure, they will develop into tropical depressions. Tropical depressions, they'll go to tropical storms. From tropical storms, if conditions are conducive, they will head up into hurricane states where you go all the way up the categories from one through to five of hurricanes. So let's see if we're putting any disturbance areas uh, along this 1015 millibar isobar. Let's see what happens. So remember, we're looking for, initially we're looking for disturbance areas. So for example, just there, uh, that is probably a cluster of thunderstorms. Just there, that 1010 millibar Isobar, but we see that's probably a cluster of thunderstorms uh, developing there uh, somewhere in uh, in um, the tropical Atlantic. Uh, but we'd only see if these clusters of thunderstorm disturbance areas form areas of low pressure. At the moment, there's not all that much sign of that happening. Uh, through the tropical Atlantic. It looks like we've got something going on just there, though. This is for the 2nd of July through the Gulf of Mexico. It looks like some sort of thundery area is probably getting going through there. But again, no no defined areas of low pressure. Uh, really. Again, there could be something off the eastern coast of America just there. Uh, that little uh, that little circulation just there, uh, but again we're still not really seeing any signs of any defined areas of low pressure or tropical storms. There's probably another sort of cluster of thunderstorms that we've got just there, that 1,010 millibar uh, area just there. But again, still no clear cut areas of low pressure, but but forming tropical storms up to the 7th of July. We go beyond that into the extended range with this GFS run. Uh, again, not seeing much happening. There is something going on in the Pacific, though. So there, there's quite a uh, quite a significant storm uh, just there over in the Pacific, the tropical Pacific Ocean. But for the Atlantic, again, it looks like it's remaining pretty quiet, really, through the first half of uh, July, with, with no sign of anything um uh, particular happening in terms of tropical storms, but uh, but we shall see. Uh, we have got something uh, just there as well. So uh, we we have that tropical storm in the Pacific um, just here. There's a tropical storm. Uh, let's go back to that. There's a tropical storm uh, just there. Uh, so again, trying to highlight this. There we go. Tropical storm is just there. This is for the tenth of July. Uh, and as we go towards the very end of this GFS run, this is the 15th of July, something else is forming in the Pacific. I think that's a separate tropical storm. Uh, so, so yes, it does look as though things are going to get more active in the Pacific uh, as we go through the first half of July. But there's not much going on at the moment in the uh, Atlantic, but we shall wait and see and we'll keep looking.
Uh, these are the uh, 500 mm high dummy flow charts for Penn State University for the next week to 10 days from the uh, from showing the ECM, WF, and the GFS. So we've got the ECM on the left and the GFS is on the right. Uh, of the screen, so you're looking at it. So 500 millibars is there in actual high pressure, low pressure. I've been moved up by objection running well. Red, red and orange, it's so high pressure, but low pressure. You can see, but with the ECM, we've got an area of above average heights, high pressure still sitting across northern parts of America. That's going to bring a lot of hot weather to northern and eastern America in the uh, next few days. So over the Independence Day weekend, for example, it'll be very hot for many parts of the states. That goes on. Uh, to some degree with the ECM anyway, up to the 7 to 10 day time frame. The GFS is weakening that a little bit, suggesting with the GFS by sort of days 8, 9, 10, it could just be starting to turn a little bit cooler, perhaps a little bit more unsettled in the far northern part of America, perhaps. Uh, these are the GFS upright temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Washington, D.C. Uh, today, uh, the capital, of course, of the state. So red light is 30-year upper air temperature average for Washington. Um, pretty hot time of year uh, on average at the moment. Temperatures around 15 degrees at 850 HPA. Next few days, as we go towards the Independence Day weekend, you're going to see things becoming hotter, actually. So temperatures will be rising well into the 90s Fahrenheit uh, as we go through the Independence Day weekend. Generally staying quite warm, really. There is a little bit of a drop in the temperature that's going on there sometime around the 8th, 9th, 10th uh, of July, just going back close to average and then lifting up again. Overall, it does look pretty hot for uh, for Washington, and I think that's that's um, pretty representative for most parts of the state. It looks pretty hot uh, for uh, for the next couple of weeks, really. Precipitation-wise, so reasonable amount of dry weather the next couple of days, and then it looks like we've got increasing amounts of thunderstorms coming along, especially as things are getting hotter towards the Independence Day uh, weekend. Temperature anomalies for the states looking like this from the 29th of June to the 7th of July. Cooler than average over in the west. Things are a little bit cooler than average in the west, particularly in the northwest. Pacific northwest is often a, a quite a coolish sort of place at best of times. Uh, and yes, it's going to be quite a cool week there. But anywhere from like the, uh, the west of the midwest through to the east, uh, eastern side, looks pretty hot really, particularly through the midwest and going up to the Great Lakes. Uh, really quite hot indeed through those areas but it's a warm scene for many central and eastern parts of the states in the week ahead it is cooler out in the west precipitation anomalies look like that varying from area to area dry in the southwestern corner of course as it usually is up to the northwest it's a little bit more unsettled away from the coast bend through like the midwest it's a little bit drier going over towards the east uh i guess a little bit more unsettled those are probably down to thunderstorms up towards the uh, great lakes but over onto the eastern side itself uh again quite a bit of dry weather a lot of variation from state to state though uh, you will see uh, there. Okay, so this is how the uh, GFS is looking for Thursday. And on Thursday, we've got quite a lot of hot weather through the Midwest and pushing up towards the Northeast. It is cooler with this area of low pressure out in the West. That brings showers or longer spells of rain and cooler temperatures out of Canada into northwestern parts of the states. There's the upper air temperature showing the Northwest looking a lot cooler as the air comes in from Canada and the Pacific. But otherwise, the upper air temperatures are hot through uh, to Thursday. Friday and into the Independence Day weekend. This is Saturday 4th of July, looking hot through many parts of the state. Very slack gradients. So uh, as well as being hot, there will be uh, there will be big showers and thunderstorms uh, developing uh, as well. But I think the heat is really going to be on over this Independence Day weekend. We see the states widely uh, with upper air temperatures into the 20 Celsius, 850 HPA mark, which I think is enough to get temperatures into the, well into 90s Fahrenheit widely across most parts of America. Just as extreme Pacific Northwestern coast looking a little bit cooler. Maybe a little bit cooler down in towards California as well. Down into the southwest actually. But but most parts of the states are looking hot as we go into the Independence Day weekend. Uh, on into Sunday. Again, it's a hot scene through many parts of America. And then early next week, it looks like we start to bring in some cooler air into the northwest. There's a bit of a trough sinking in from the north, uh, from Canada in towards the north to northeast 
least I should say. So that will start to lower the temperatures, increase the risk of thunderstorms, of course, developing through the Great Lakes up towards the northeast. Meanwhile, going out into the north, into the Midwest, it still looks pretty hot through there. Heading up towards day 10, that's how we're looking with the upper air temperature. So you see they have cooled down a little bit across the far north and northeastern corner of the states, but generally still a hot scene really from the Midwest out to the west coast and then through these southern and southeast states, looking hot through uh, to the through, through to the second half of next week. Day 10 is Thursday, the 9th of July. Again, just a little bit cooler around this Pacific northwestern coast. Uh, into more extended range with this GFS run. Again, it's quite a hot uh, couple of days after that. But as we go towards the very end of the GFS run, it does turn a good deal cooler and more unsettled through much of the north and the northeast too. There is low pressure involved with this, so really heavy rain and thunderstorms like to be breaking out across many of these northern and northeastern states as we get towards the middle of July. Temperatures doing a little bit of a plummet as well. Uh, much cooler through many parts of the Midwest and over towards the east of the northeast as we get through to the middle of July. But southern states still looking hot, of course, and up this western side becoming hotter, actually. The heat really pushing up in towards the Pacific Northwest as we get through to mid-July. Remember, that's two weeks away, so it's a really, really long way out. Uh, this is how the ECM uh, is looking. So again, this is the Euro uh, for Thursday, and uh, it's a cool and showery scene in the northwest. Otherwise, quite hot across many northern parts of the states and through the Midwest too. Heading into the Independence Day weekend, again, it's hot across most parts of America. Upper air temperatures widely suggesting that uh, the service temperatures will be well into the 90s Fahrenheit widely across most parts of America for this Independence Day weekend. Slack gradient, so likely to trigger big showers and thunderstorms uh, with that heat, uh, but it, it really will be hot uh, across many parts of states over the weekend. Into next week, we keep these hot conditions going. Again, the upper air temperatures suggesting uh, a really warm to hot week coming up into next week. Uh, again, even in the northwest, it's not quite as cool, actually, as the GFS is. Uh, moving to day 10, that's how we're looking. So once again, it's staying pretty hot, but probably starting to pull some slightly cooler air in from Canada into the far north and northeast perhaps Upper air temperatures are still holding up uh, more than the GFS is doing at this point, but probably just begin to turn a little bit cooler in the far north to northeast. But generally, it's a hot scene uh, over the next week to 10 days. The heat is going to be on over the next week to 10 days across many parts of America. CFSV2 is looking like this. It's a 500 millibar height breaking down into weekly periods. The first week period takes us from the 29th of June to 5th of July. The coming week has this big ridge in the north, and of course, this is what's drawing up heat from the south. It is cooler in the Northwest, that trough of low pressure bringing in the air from off the Pacific, and, uh, and that's a lot cooler. But most part states have a hot week to come. Week two is the 6th through to the 12th of July. Again, a ridge in the northeast is going to allow hot air to push up from the south. Again, the trough of low pressure over towards the northwest keeps things cooler there. Otherwise, it's a hot scene through most parts of the states in that week. Week three is the 13th to the 19th of July. Again, hot weather in the east and the northeast. Um, possibly a little bit more of an Atlantic influence, though, so it could be a little bit cooler with the air coming in from off the Atlantic uh, Ocean to some of those eastern states. But generally, the ridge is still there through the Midwest and up to the Northeast, bringing more hot conditions with it. Perhaps a bit of a sign of a change for week four. This is the 20th to 26th of July. By then, it looks like the ridge is slipping further southwards and probably weakening some higher pressure up towards the Pacific Northwest as well. And that could start to allow lower pressure to begin to move into some of these northern states from Canada. So possibly around the middle of July into the second half of the month, it starts to turn cooler, particularly, I would have thought, for the north, maybe for the northeast too. It starts to turn cooler and a little bit more showering. I did promise that I would show you something for uh, December uh, with this. So I did a live stream yesterday and I showed this 700 millibar height anomaly for my uh, UK and European viewers. Uh, basically, this is showing northern blocking for December. It's showing a lot of high pressure in December, above average heights, which is blocking with these uh, dark orange colours sitting within the northern latitudes. This is sort of pattern that can bring cold to 
both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. When you get Northern Blocking setting up over Greenland and back into the Arctic, uh, you can pull down, we do uh, very often pull down cold uh, east or northerly winds or northeast winds into Northern Europe, but we can also pull cold air via that blocking down into the States as well. The storm track and the jet stream tends to shift southwards, so uh, with this kind of uh, level of blocking, we would tend to move the jet stream southwards into southern parts of America and then across the Atlantic and ultimately into uh, Spain, Portugal and Mediterranean for Europe. Uh, that does actually show a ridge of high pressure through, through the Med, but, but with such levels of normal blocking, you would expect that high pressure to be uh, pushed away uh, by the suddenly tracking jet stream. So you would tend to get low pressure coming in through here with these uh, with this level of northern blocking and that would mean that cold air pulls down from uh, the northern latitudes, from the Arctic, into both North America and also into Northern Europe as well. It's a sort of situation that can bring cold to both sides of the uh, Atlantic, as happened, I think, during the December to remember in 2010. Now, bear in mind that uh, 700 millibar height anomaly from the surface V2 is six months away. So it's a very, very long way out. Almost certainly won't verify, but uh, but we're going to keep an eye on uh, the long-range output for Europe, of course, as we're heading in towards the autumn, and then ultimately when we get towards winter, we'll keep an eye on uh, on on the long-range output for Europe, and, and at the same time, might as well do it for America as well. So if you're interested in the longer range, if you're interested in what the weather may be doing across North America uh, during this coming winter, then uh, we will have more in the videos over the next few weeks and months. Okay, that's it for today's video then. Uh, so if you've enjoyed it, please give us a like on the video. Don't forget to tell us in the, comment what, in the comments what you thought and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends to subscribe uh, as well. And uh, we'll get ourselves 7k subs very, very soon. I'm quite sure about that. Next update for the United States is going to be on Thursday. So uh, same time, same place. Have another update for America on Thursday. Uh, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.